Oh, didn't realize I wasn't online, or I didn't realize I was online. Whatever. King Aland the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valarfax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old king Alant had aroused the old one, the great beast below the nexus from its eternal slumber, and that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls also lose their minds. The mad attack the sane, and chaos reigns. Valarfax spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors were drawn to the accursed land, but none have returned. Bjor of the Twin Fangs, Yurt the Silent Chief, Sage Urbane, Skurber the Wanderer, the sixth saint Astraea and her knight Garl Vinland. And sage Freik the visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber.
No point in using an item here. Using the arc stone is just as good. It's very disingenuous of the the game to give establish the fact that you need to use healing items and none of the enemies in this area can kill you. I guess they don't expect people to die in this area. I guess they expect it to be pretty easy. Like they set everything up to be very deliberate in the way that you deal with things. so much so that they don't expect you to die even though then they just throw this dude at you and he's more powerful than everybody else here which doesn't make any sense plus he's standing in front of the tutorial message so I guess they expect you to parry him just like the other guy and then this one's supposed to teach you how to deal with uh, a guy who turtles but it's just faster just to parry him too Tutorial. Tutorials are really hard, you guys. How do you fit in a level that was supposed to be somewhere else in the game and make it a tutorial level instead? Pretty sure this was the last level that they worked on. Because that way, by the time this level was made, they already figured out what they were trying to do with the game. So they built this level in accordance. But I'm pretty sure this level was supposed to be somewhere else. Hey, Pinku. This feels like it was supposed to be a very much, a much more substantial area. Because there's a lot of areas in this level that are just straight up cut off. Like they're not supposed to be, like you're supposed to be able to go in them. There was a door that I passed by uh, earlier, a port close, that had a switch placed behind it. So it would have attend the they originally intended you to go through probably right here to get to that switch. And it would have been like a shortcut to the boss. But they didn't do that for some reason. They I hate all these attacks. Only in Demon Souls, where you can just, uh, the animations in this game are so unfinished. Oops. Hold on a second. I'm a professional. Thanks. I have like 20 USB cords all over my room, and I can't for the life of me figure out which one I need. I knew I forgot to do something. There we go. Price is averted. Alright, so here is the only one enemy in the entire tutorial that can kill you. Like I said, I have no idea why they thought that was an idea. It's an idea, it's here, they never got rid of it. So one-handed is obviously a poop way of dealing with him, so let's do it. So Two-hand is loads better. Hey Q-tip. I can get four swings. And then the safest way that I think is to deal with him is just to walk around him. Because all of his attacks arc. They have like a very specific arc, so if you just walk to, into the arc of his attack, you can usually just straight up avoid him. He also likes to back up. You'll know he's, he's gonna try to do something when he backs up, because he wants to get some range on you before he swings. And then sometimes he likes to do this. He'll, he'll just loop. He'll keep looping. Ah, there we go. 
These phantoms are developer phantoms. There's, there's nobody here in this room. In the earlier areas, some of those were developer phantoms, and maybe some of them were actually player phantoms. But the ones in this room, they're... They're developer phantoms. Like that one right over there with a the bow. Why would there be a guy all the way over there with a bow firing into a corner? Just like the absurdity of, of some of the developer phantoms. And then this is like the only arc stone in the entire game that doesn't uh, refill your health upon using it. Because uh, I guess it's because you it just sort of teleports you here which really makes no sense in the context of the other game. So it's like the mechanics here are kind of like inconsistent, I think. But it's not like you can do anything against uh, the dragon here. And also up to this point, the game doesn't count a death. I think it's like the game, the game only counts deaths you have the Nexial binding in your inventory, and at this point, you, you're not bound to the Nexus, so the death that you get here doesn't count. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it does, but I don't, I don't know. I don't really count this. If, I were, if I'm doing a permadeath run, I go through here because the boss is the only thing in the uh, area that can kill you, and I count this as a cutscene, if anything. Plus, it's kind of funny the way the, uh, the game deals with this. It treats it like a cutscene to the point that you can interact with your inventory. And I'll, I'll show you. Yes, yes, you're very scary. Ow. So I still have a health bar. I can just button mash that, and then I can unequip something while I'm in the menu. Makes no sense. But I guess that's just, it's just sort of like a thing. They were experimenting with this game, but they didn't really think about some of the mechanics. This is the only time in the entire game that you can interact with your menu when you're dead. Up to, like, you can do so much uh, that you can actually quit out when when you're in the middle of that cutscene. But it just sends you back to the last uh, teleportation that you did when you were in the tutorial. It won't let you leave the tutorial. You'll have to kill uh, Vanguard again. It'll act as if you never killed him the first time. That thumb, though. This is the Nexus. I know it does. It holds together You're the talking to the guy who played the game, who's beaten the game twice, permadeath. It doesn't count that death. Thou For some reason, it won't count it. Or it doesn't count it. But I know it has one. It has one up in the um, Pantheon. And I'm playing online, too. So if anybody wants to invade me. I'm not going to do anything uh, game-breaking or, or the like. I'm just going to play it the way I normally play. And I left it online by accident, so that's just a thing that's happened. And then, of course, the Nexus. Well, obviously, it's a you know, central area and everything. And most of the dudes that you would interact with, they're just not here at the moment. Like, uh, the mage over there isn't here. Uh, none of the, none of the faith people are over there except for the lady, and then of course Thomas and uh, Ed are here. No, that's bold one. I keep forgetting. I learned something interesting. What was it? I, I was trying to remember. There was something interesting about bold one's voice actor. Yeah, they're still up. Yes, yeah, so this game has a death counter. What's up, Shiltube? 
and Junith. Junith? Junith? Is that right? How are you watching this in 720? Oh, it's through the power of uh, my affiliation. Because I'm an affiliate and they now give uh, quality options to affiliates by default. That's pretty much the only thing that I wanted of wanted from being an affiliate. Rip well, English. You slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came. From oh, I thought you were just watching uh, through like medium quality or something. Remembered as a hero. <laughs> Hunting for demons. Try one There's of the not even quality options. Now go. Then mm, I've been lied to. Is why you came, is it not? Dang it, Twitch. No point in even being affiliate then. Rip. Uh, do I want to use the long sword? I don't know. I don't really care. So let's. It's really weird. I I find it, I find it weird. If you've never played this game before, it'll force you into that tutorial level that I just did. But if you've already played through the game. If it detects that you have a save file that's already gone through the tutorial once, then you don't even have to do it. But you're automatically locked into going through one level, the same level over and over again. So it's like you go through a tutorial and then you go through tutorial again. Okay. Then I guess I'll never have quality options by that logic. Rip quality. Quality stream gone. Have to try restarting. I am streaming at a higher bit rate, chill tube. That may explain why it looks good. I usually stream at a very low bit rate. Specifically for the reasons that I just mentioned. I didn't have quality options, so some people just had trouble watching my stream. Shield, top quality shield. Good with that. Who's gonna hit me first? It's actually fast. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if it's faster to just do a running R1 at one of these jumping dudes or just parry and repost them. Also animation cancelling is funny in this game. One of the things that most people, I don't know if any, I know most speedrunners know about this kind of stuff, the animation cancelling, but it's like one of those things that I don't really see like so-called video game critics talk about. Also, yeah, uh, I noticed I'm standing right here and that archer, that uh, crossbow dude shot an uh, a crossbow directly below him, which is really weird. So the animations in this game are something to be definitely that needed improvement. You mistyped PogChamp like five times. Pogchimp. 
Pogchimp? Isn't it Pogchimp? Oh, hey. I didn't realize I was gonna climb on a table and then he knocks me on my ass. Oh. I should lock on more. Oh yeah, and then like I said, uh, only Souls game where you can flat out be staggered and still get a parry. It's pretty funny, to say the least. Watching is like, oh, that, that counted, okay. Spicy man. Hey, that should have been a backstab. What the heck? He turned around and he showed me his back. Uh, that's fun. Oh, that's not fun. That is still not fun. I don't know how that guy... I don't like the fact that most of these guys can throw up their shields without any tell whatsoever. Uh, the shield dudes, or the, uh, the spear dudes in particular are notoriously good at doing that. Just throwing a shield up in the middle of being attacked. It's like their animation cancels throwing a shield up. Or it's more like, um, if you hit a dude with enough poise break in this game, they will straight up animation cancel into another animation. Or reset their animation. If I had a bow, I could deal with the guy behind me. The camera in this game is also very bad in some instances if you're locked on. It's fine if you're not locked on. I really need to learn how to parry. Yeah, just fall down there. That'll work. I love doing this. I learned this from the speedrunners. But can I do it with full fat armor on? Yep. Just roll over boulders. Lucy does not give a crap. <sighs> trying to parry and then I got staggered by a ball. Dropped inputs. There was nothing I could do. Heal before I get decked. There we go. Aw. Oh. That guy doesn't have the chance. You can't get the knight sh sword from that guy as far as I know. But it would be cool if I could. I'm pretty sure he drops either a broad sword or a long sword. They don't want you getting the knight sword this early. <laughs> Because the, uh, the game has like a very clear weapon level for like each class of weapon. It's like broadsword, longsword, knight sword, for example, and like bastard sword, claymore, great sword, stuff like that. Heck, even the scimitar has a like a, a level of weapon, so it's like scimitar, falchion, kiwish. The weapons are just slightly better versions of themselves. And then, of course, I can stand here and let these guys off themselves. Because usually I can get a couple of them in the, down there. Okay. No free turpentine from anybody. Lingering. And then a hair ornament so I can get a ring for later. Uh, 
Oh, there is a thing. I missed it. Oh. He heard what I said and he gave me some turpentine. That was nice of him. Yeah, clean ring is like uh top ring that you get at the beginning of the game. Same for the thief's ring. Thieves Ring is probably by far the best ring in the game. Ah. I was hoping I can roll over the wall. That was a bold jump. A surprise indeed. Well, now that you are here, pray thee. Fend off these dr What on earth are you doing? Stop talking. Defend me. I love doing this because sometimes he'll die. He's died maybe twice out of the countless times that I've made him do this. He expects me to do all the work. He's got another thing coming. Okay, that's enough. He's, he's helped enough. Let me help him. Okay. I helped. I did a patches. Yeah. My thanks for your brick. I and then he gives me that uh, brass telescope that looks like a bottle. Anything? No. Let's see if I can get a claymore off of this knight. Sometimes he drops a claymore, sometimes he doesn't. Most of the time he doesn't. No, not playing more this time. Next time, maybe. There's a scimitar right here, too. Most of the time I go with uh, the soldier, because the soldier comes with a really cool set of armor. But this one comes with the long sword, so I usually go with her sometimes. I got fire bombs. Time to do some fancy pyrotechnics. Love just walking right here and throwing a bomb right in the center. I got five of them. Usually it's the first guy that I always miss. For reasons. And then you can just, like, come here. Oh. I like how they just sort of curve around corners. That's, an, that's when you know they have good AI. They can curve around corners. Sort of like that one movie with uh, James McAvoy in it where he could curve bullets. It just may have been my signal or something. I don't know. I honestly have no idea what, I, what I'm doing differently to make the, uh, the video actually watchable. I did change a couple of stream settings. Like, I made it so that the CPU does more encoding and uh, more bitrate. Oh, hey. I'm not trying to parry, but I could. Because, um... When you have an enemy bounce off your shield, you set him up for a counter attack. Or like, not exactly a counter attack, but like, a stagger attack. So you do a little bit more damage. And it seems like I'm doing enough damage to one shot them with that, so... It probably, if I, uh, if I don't think I'm gonna get it to parry, I can probably kill them at least with one hit. And I love just walking up behind these guys, because they leave themselves wide open when they fire. Heck, I should probably do that with the spear dudes. Let's try that. I haven't really thought about it with the spear dudes, but the spear dudes, like I said earlier, are the bane of my existence. And if I didn't say it, I meant to say it. They, these guys really suck. Yeah, 
Especially the red-eyed knight spears. I love it when you clip into um you clip into a collision of some sort. Give me a sec. Somebody was asking me something. Alright, let's this one? Good. Not both. That's much better than what I normally do. Ow, this hurts. I'm trying to parry him. See, the thing in Demon Souls is that you can't hold your shield up and parry at the same time. That was something they introduced in Dark Souls. So you can hold down the button all you want. It, it just won't do anything. All right, I gotta take my armor off because I need to be fast enough to get to the items that are over there by the dragons. Hmm, I'm kind of surprised that he lived, but not really. I, I don't know what I was trying to go for with that. All right, so wait for him to blow fire, and then you can start running. You just keep running. You'll keep running. Just keep running. Don't let your stamina deplete. And then start running when you think you have enough. Keep running again. Just keep on running. And you hear that the dragon actually did a second passer. For some reason. And I'm being called. Great, I'm getting called when I'm in an area that I can easily be murdered. Give me a second. But yeah, that is the way that I come over here to get these items. Because you can come over here in pure white world tendency and the dragons won't be here. But this is just to prevent backtracking. And it's still a dangerous thing to do because if you're not fast enough, you'll get uh, obliterated by the red dragon. If you're not standing too far to the left, the blue dragon will smash you against the wall. So, anyway, uh, give me a second. Somebody was calling me. Hey, Zombie Siege. Sorry. People got me some food. Hmm. 
Okay. Nice. I was able to get it up just fast enough. And as I was saying earlier, the Thief's Ring is really, really, really good. Up to the point that, um... By the time I'm done pulling the switch and down the stairs to the alleyway with the ambush, these guys have already lost their interest in me. Yeah, my stream kind of like, uh, it's not a very popular stream. hoping I can just run around him, but I guess not. Oh, hey, I killed the other guy. It's funny how that happens. It's like, uh, he was the farthest enemy away from me, and I still locked onto him first. Animations in this game, though. The two-handed R2 for this weapon is much faster than every other... Not popular, but not bad. Oh, thanks. You should see me when I get really salty. I'm, st I'm still trying to learn strategies for dealing with these guys. Oh, hey. <laughs> just, thanks. Just thanks for not looking at me when I backstab you. It's really weird that these guys are always like, they're more likely to throw a firebomb at you from a foot away than they are from 20 feet away. Like, hey, you're right in my junk. I guess I'll just throw a fireball at you instead. Hey, medieval freak show. I had to be careful. If you, ba if you repost an enemy on a ledge, you'll throw yourself off with them. The game has something uh, Sanzo84 likes to call super momentum. Also, you can roll past some dudes. It's really weird. You would think you wouldn't be able to do that, but it's just like a thing that you can do in Demon Souls. You're excited? Something, something exciting happening? Shouldn't be my stream. My stream's pretty boring. And I'm just sort of playing through the game casually. How many times have I beaten this game? Uh, maybe 20 times? I'm not really sure how many. The only ones I count are the ones that I don't die. And I've completed the game twice without dying. Every other time it's been maybe two or three times that I've died before I got to the end. And then, like, my first playthrough was... I don't know how many times I died in my first playthrough. I honestly don't even remember the first time I played this game. Um, do I need to? Yeah. Oop. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted either. You're not the only one, and you can't hide it? Oh, okay. That's what you meant. <laughs> Can you guys, like, stop? I'm... Wow. These guys are really bloodthirsty today. I'm only gonna give myself... There we go. I, I, I like keeping firebombs now. The beauty of using two-hand is that you'll break right through a dude's shield with it. Or at least I think that was what they're trying to teach you in the tutorial. That using two-handed attacks, you don't bounce off the shield so easily. Still trying to figure out what weapon I want to use. Yeah, sure. There's nothing really important that I'm doing. I'm, I'm just like playing through the game and trying to think about what I want to say about the game. 
I know there are people on Twitch that like try to hold this game into like pull all the Souls games into this like really really high regard. Like they'll, oh, I won't use magic, I won't summon, I won't refer to wikis, stuff like that. I'm fine. I'm fine with that kind of stuff. I think I'm gonna probably go to World uh, Two in a moment. So if you wanna, if you wanna do summoning and stuff, I can do it there. Because I want to get my weapon. I don't know what weapon I want to use. In all honesty. Hey, Liam. You're running around killing those things. I don't blame you. Those things are really annoying. Not only that, they can heal the boss. And I'm here because I'm getting a couple of some uh, upgrade materials real quick. Hello. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, uh, Bro Strava. For some reason, the FPS in this area is really bad when you're running away or running towards uh, the first level of Boletaria. Like, if you face this way, you'll notice that the FPS goes to like 20. Because the game's usually around 30, give or take. But I guess it's like some kind of double frame buffering in this area, and it was just like a thing that they never fixed. Like, there was so much about this game that they just left broken. They fixed the bloodstains disappearing when the game first came out. Like, I got a version of the game that was pre-patched, but that was it. They, they patched only... They only patched, like, a, a glitch where bloodstains could be carried over to other characters. What level am I? I'm level 4. I haven't leveled up yet. I just cleared Boletaria, and I didn't get really that many upgrade materials. Alright. I'll come back here later. Because, um... Well, most people don't know this, but you can kill the Drake on the bridge without using magic or bow. You can use, um... Most... Most weapons that are about as big as a longsword, really. Alright, so let's go to the Nexus. 